we are going to touch on a popular concept which involves using a dividend paying whole life insurance policy, a high cash value life insurance policy to finance real estate. Uh, a lot of real estate investors are attracted to this idea. Some hear about it, don't move forward. Some see it, move forward right away. So conceptually, we're gonna to touch on exactly how this works. We'll begin with the whole life insurance piece. So with a, the whole life, a whole life policy, I should say, this 100% has to do with the cash value. You will see some tied to the death benefit, but when it comes to actually purchasing real estate, if that's my goal, the cash value has everything to do with it. This is the key here. So when it comes to the cash value, a couple bullet points here. It is a safe, liquid, tax-free area to position money. Tax-free, provided I don't mess the policy up and there's we've got more content on that elsewhere. But Let's touch on these two pieces, safe and guarantees. So the money in itself within the cash value component of a life insurance policy is not tied to or invested in the stock market. I have a guaranteed floor, a guaranteed minimum interest rate of 4%. And then typically the company will pay a dividend on top of that. And with different companies, I'll see dividends range from about 5 to 6%. That's for 2020. Uh, the liquidity money is very liquid once it's inside of a cash value life insurance policy and the tax benefits well we've got a lot more content on that here's the piece that really makes it all work this is what attracts people who are involved in real estate because it resonates with a real estate investor no lost opportunity cost in the sense that once a dollar passes through the cash value of a life insurance policy Regardless, if I just let that dollar sit and grow, or if I borrow against it, if I pull it out, I continue to yield dividends and interest, the guaranteed rate and dividends, as if all of the money were still in the policy in the first place. A lot like a piece of property, if I'm appreciating at 5%, whatever that real estate's appreciating at, if I borrow against the equity, I still receive the appreciation on the entire appraisal value not just the remaining equity. You'll find that it is very, very similar with the whole life insurance policy. So when it comes to real estate, cash flow, there's different ways to invest in real estate. Maybe it's buy and hold, sell it down the road, but typically cash flow is what works quite nicely with the whole life insurance policy, meaning I'm purchasing properties that are producing cash flow, flowing back to me. Cash flow is king at the end of the day too. <laughs> so. The property, let's say I'm earning somewhere between six and 12%, broad range, but it really depends where I'm investing and how much capital I have to work with, depending on what type of deal I can get. Now, to purchase it with a life insurance policy, let's take a look here. So in action, how this would use, how this would work. If I have a life insurance policy, and let's pretend, how much capital should we look at here? Uh, a bigger piece of property, okay, let's say we've got $500,000 in cash value. Now the thing is, you do have to capitalize a policy first, meaning to have 500 grand, I would have had to have paid that in or paid in less than that and then the appreciation obviously grew to 500K. But I can't just put a dollar in and instantly have 500K. So if I've got 500K in cash value, I wanna buy a piece of property, let's say this costs, Three hundred fifty thousand. So I want to purchase this three hundred fifty k property. I can buy it in cash, finance through the bank, or finance through my policy. So financing through a life insurance policy. Here's how this would work. So I'm going to loan out three hundred fifty k from my policy. So first things first. Remaining cash value. Would be one fifty. Reason for that is because I take a policy loan of $350,000 to purchase the property. Okay, so at 500K in cash value, I've borrowed out 350, so I've got 150 remaining in equity. Okay, now what's going to happen here is 
I've got that 350 loan outstanding. So there is a cost to borrow, just like there'd be a cost to borrow to take a line of credit out or a mortgage from a lender. It's going to depend on the insurance company. Typically, you'll see them range from about 5 to 6%. Now, that 5% on the loan will go to the insurance company. So if I paused there, this concept would make zero sense because I'm literally borrowing and paying interest on my own money. However, just like a piece of property that I'm earning the appreciation on the entire appraisal value, here's what happens. If the company is paying me, I'm just gonna use some simple numbers here, 5% on 500K, say it's four or 5%, whatever, I'm going to continue to receive that even though I pulled 350 out. There's no lost opportunity cost. Now, how the insurance company does this, tying back to the death benefit, where we said it has some importance with this concept, is if I borrow at 350, let's say day one, my death benefit was a million bucks, I pull out 350, the insurance company is going to collateralize my death benefit. So if I die with a loan outstanding, they're on the hook for 350K less. They're okay with that. Remember, their first and foremost obligation is to do what? Pay out life insurance claims. And if I pay it back, it's all fully restored. But what we've got going on here is I am still compounding on that full 500 while I'm paying interest only on the 350. Quick side note. Loan interest accrues at annual simple interest. So if I pay it each year, it will not compound on itself, which is valuable. So literally what guys will do here is borrow, call it 350, purchase the property. If that is producing 8% or whatever it is, now they can take that 8% and use it to repay the policy loan. The thing is, this is constantly at work for them. Again, no lost opportunity cost. What's interesting is if, you ever, if you've ever seen any of our videos where we looked at a policy side by side where I pay money in, let it sit and grow, compared to borrowing and then repaying, what you'll find is once a loan's paid back, my cash value is fully restored to what it would have been as if I had never touched it in the first place. That compounding continues. There's no lost opportunity cost. So really using a policy for real estate that allows me to call it double dip <laughs> on my money where I keep my primary bucket of cash at work for me and then at the same time invest in real estate where I get a return over there, keep the compounding going forward, good stuff. And as always, hope this helps. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.